And while we're at it, lock up your money and your daughters, because now it's time to introduce my first guest on the show, the one and only Spike Milligan. <laughs> Good evening, Spike. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, <laughs> First of all, I want to apologize for, pass you. for passing you on the London to Brighton Veteran Car Rally, which I did. Yes. I mean, we made it. Everybody passed me on the London to Brighton. <laughs> I got there at about four o'clock, and a bloke said, what? I said, the, the, the finishing line. Oh, they all gone, sir. <laughs> they all gone now. In the pouring rain, wife, four kids, Dressed with a bowler hat and a red shirt, we had to walk to the streets of Brighton to the station. Yeah, right. With blankets, you know. It's so cold. Poor, poor chap, poor chap. Poor, they got it. He's <laughs> always been like that. Uh, that's what happened. But I was a bit surprised to see you on it because you're a bit of an individualist with regards to traditions, yeah. aren't you? Do you think there are any traditions that are worth preserving? Um, yes, I suppose. Beauty, worth preserving. I try to preserve mine. <laughs> you have to look closer than that to find it. <laughs> yes, I suppose that's it. Beauty and truth and purity and honesty and integrity. It's a long list, you know. That's why nobody keeps it, you know. It's fed up with it. You can't keep up with it all the time. What about traditions in the country, though? I mean, you know. What country? This country. Oh. Yeah. Well. You're a bit anti things like sort of uh, the lifeguards and all that bit, aren't you? Lifeguards? Yeah. Aren't you a bit. Uh, no, no. Do you mind us? No, I don't want the lifeguards. They've never charged me personally. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I remember you wrote, um, you wrote a letter to, uh, I think it was Life magazine. Yeah, yeah. Complaining about the mediocrity of Britain's working men or a few other things. What was all that about? Well, I saw a letter in which the chap said, we in England are all going forward and it's a jolly good country and everything's jolly fine and jolly good. <laughs> oh, I think since then he's learned different. But anyhow, I replied and I said, well, I thought there were good things in this country. For a start, uh, this country, I suppose, is, uh, well, my father said, go easy with the English. He said, because they really are the last of the wine. That's uh, the what? Last of the wine. Oh, yeah. There's a complimentary statement. And I like this country, but I don't like to see it to going down. And if you like a country and you see it going down, you kick up a fuss. You don't just sit down and say, it's jolly good and everything's all right and we're all, the blah, 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 you know. <laughs> So, you know, if, if, if you write and uh, uh, tell the truth, the truth hurts, and it hurt people, you know. Did well, you mind? Uh, well, no. You've got to, somebody's got to speak up. And they will print my letters where poor old Fred, the foreman who's getting bad service from his workmen, he, if he writes up, they don't print the letter. So I, I write it on his behalf, actually. Fair enough. Did you appreciate that? Yes, I'm one of his workmen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's put you in the supreme position then, as Prime Minister. What would you do if you were Prime Minister? I'd resign. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's a smart remark, actually. I think they've had a terrible, tough job. I think they're all basically honest men. But it's a terrible, tough job. Everybody keeps hitting them. Don't forget, there's people downstairs who have to be hit as well. They have a very tough job to take a country over, which is, you know, we've gone over the hill. Every country does in the history of mankind. I think they're straight, honest lads, trying to do a very tough job with very little, you know. I think they're good lads. I think they're having a go, at least, you know. I'm sure, I know they speak yeah. well of you, Spike. Eh? <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> rhubarb, rhubarb. Excuse I me one X, second. X on 14,000 vote papers. Huh? Did you? Yes, the money was. The money. <laughs> okay, one second for uh, Paul, another song on the show. Oh, From um, My first number will... What? Oh. You finished? Hang on. I'm going to sing, Oh, Ma Sharif. Don't bother. To me, he was. <laughs> <laughs> the song that we're about to hear eventually, School Sons and Lovers, and of course, the words are by that distinguished writer, D.H. Lawrence of Arabia. Not really, but here to sing it is the one and only Paul Jones. Well,
That's Paul Jones. That was with Sons and Lovers. I forgot to put my date forward. It is the second, isn't it? The second. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wake up, Terry. Uh, oh, why? Oh. He's a big good. help, isn't he? What? He's a big help, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> it's easy second, Question. all of you. Not payoffs. All right. Well, where were we? We were, meantime, back at the ranch. No, I've been seeing a lot of words with you and associated with trees. Good. Spike. What's all that about? You are a founder of the formation of preservation of all trees. No, nothing to do with me. They get here on their own. Um. <laughs> No, nothing. Well, I don't understand, uh, Michael. Trees are... Well, Michael? Uh, Tom. Smith. <laughs> Fred. Look, I'm a priest in disguise. I'm baptizing you. Michael Tom D. <laughs> it's the Michael Tom D. <laughs> Sorry, Simon, I was just seeing if you were alert, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Trees, all are... They're there. Trees are there. If you, if you don't want to talk about trees it. Trees are right? there. Well, well, like trees, yes, you know. They've never done me any harm. But I keep seeing pictures of you in the evening news or something. Say to me... out a tree. Say to me, how does President Johnson carry out his war on poverty? How does President Johnson carry out his war on poverty? He throws grenades at beggars. <laughs> <laughs> Just I'd like to have a whole American service audience tonight. <laughs> I have a couple of books here that you've written, Spike which are supreme examples of mad poetry. Yes. Does that give you a bit of a kick to write all those? Yeah, great. I love it, sir. Do you? Yes. Can I read one? Please do. Anyone you Literacy like? Literacy is no crime. <laughs> all right, here we go. This is called Lobster. Libster, Lobster, Labster, Lee, living in the deep blue sea. <laughs> Libster, Lobster, where are you? Gone to lunch. Back at two. <laughs> They never laugh at me when I read it, honestly. <laughs> Sticker, can I read Carrington Briggs? Yes. Carrington Briggs cared not to figs whether he lived or died. But when he was dead, he lay on his bed and he cried, he cried. <laughs> I forgot the rest of it. How do you think them all up, Spike? I don't know, kids mostly. Uh, Children have a wonderful sort of... Ma well, if you've got kids, you'll know they say, you know, the most intriguing thing about children when they start to speak is how they speak. They've got a wonderful euphony of their own, you know. And it really is beautiful and fascinating. And uh, uh, it's like you get hooked on drugs. I get hooked on kids saying... You know. Yeah. It is, it's sweet. Good. It is sweet. It's lovely. Very good. Mm. How many children do you have now? Four? Four when I left home, you know. But, uh, <laughs> We live in a pretty hot district. <laughs> Come around sometime, you know. They watch the show? Hmm? They watch, are they watching it tonight? Tomorrow? I think they're watching it. It's my, my daughter's birthday. Um, I better oh. say happy birthday to her because I haven't seen her today. Happy birthday, dear. This is the age you live in. Where's it? Oh, I'm looking at the. <laughs> Which camera do you want? Try that one. Yeah, anyone. Hello. That looks good on to me. Hello. Hello. It's fine. Working. <laughs> what Where is her name? Sile. Uh, huh? Sile. S I L E. With a grab over the, it's an ancient Earth name for Sheila. It's older than Sheila. I see. Thought I'd pick. Now I'm so sick of all the names like Mary, Gladys, uh, um, Dolly, Mavis. I thought I'd try and give her a different name, you know. Hmm. Do they mind their father being in show business? No, because I'm not much of a show business person at home. I'm a bit temperamental at home, you know. I'm not very much of a show business person. Well, you don't take your work home with you? No. What work? What show business? <laughs> Uh, no, I'm not, no, no. I mean, you don't mind taking home problems, discussing at showbiz with the kids or staying out late? And no, I, I never bother them with what I got. I sort of get a lot on your plate at times, so I don't lumber them with it, you know. But mm. as I say, I'm a bit temperamental. I give them a base of answer, like tell them to... <laughs> Move along. Yes. Spike, back with you in a second. Brother, thank you. On with the show. On with the show. Now for some more of those uh, song title captions for newspaper pictures, actually, that we came up with, just before we get to that for a minute. Um, what, is, what have we got? A singer now? We've got someone on the show. Wait a minute. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, wait a minute. You're going to do it. We, ladies and gentlemen, must excuse me, quite honestly, but um, Spike wanted to play the piano. No, I didn't. This is a lie. 
Jackie Trent was on the show and she's got a sore throat. <laughs> and, uh, After an ex exchange of marijuana with Tubby Hayes. Get off! Uh, <laughs> leave, leave! So, I, I, I'm forced into All this. All right, go on. I've never done this before, and I've never done it. Ladies again. and gentlemen, I refuse to say anything else because the next three minutes are all yours. Spike Milligan at the piano. <laughs> Mike Milligan Ensemble there was something called, I'll remember, April. Tubby Hayes uh, saving the day, though, don't forget that. <laughs> Tubby Hayes and Joe Mandel and Hayden Jackson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to those uh, song title captions that we asked for a few weeks ago. If you remember, I asked you to send in some pictures with some song titles along with them, and here are a few that we've come up with. Miss P. Harvey of London, SE27, suggested this. The title of the song to go with that, If I Were a Rich Man. <laughs> From our maze of North Hope, this. Almost there. <laughs> Mrs. Kathleen Nichols of Leamington Spa, Kathleen, hello, resorted to the one that started it all, thinking ain't for me. <laughs> and from Roger Kinsey, I knew we'd get this one sooner or later, of Little Abingdon, Cambridge, baby, now that I've found you. <laughs> and from Mrs. J. Coates of Horfield, Bristol, someday my prince will come. <laughs> And while we're at it, lock up your money and your daughters, because now it's time to introduce my first guest on the show, the one and only Spike Milligan. 